Morning, everybody. So I'm here to tell you a story. About six years ago, I walked into an administrator's office for what I thought would be a quick conversation. And the administrator had this look, and you know the look. It means that they're working on one thing. Their, their eyes are bloodshot. Everything's blurry. They're scheduling. And so we started talking about what he was doing. He had been cutting and pasting for, I think, four or five hours that day. And he saw my reaction, and I think he, he realized he needed to reassure me. So he said, no, don't, don't worry. I, I really enjoy this. It's like a, a big puzzle. But then he paused and gave the real reason. I don't know a better way. Do you? And I get his first point. Okay, sometimes we do find pleasure in the tedious things that we have to do as part of our job. Okay. But like clean air and coffee in the staff room, time is a really valuable resource. He was trying to use his time effectively. He was trying really hard. He had actually invented what I think is probably the most efficient way to do what he was trying to do. The problem is he was then trying to go through that whole process by hand. A problem because a computer could follow his exact steps and get that scheduling done very quickly. But he didn't know how to make the computer do that. And I didn't either. But this was where my coding journey began. Learning to code was already among my goals for that school year. But like my students, I needed a context. Okay? And this project was perfect. This scheduling challenge became my syllabus. And so I started by searching for examples. I copied other people's code and then broke it in trying to make it do what I wanted it to do. And I tried, usually unsuccessfully, to read reference materials. I had some very patient folks that decided to spend some of their valuable time reading through my lines of code and explain my errors judgment-free. And probably most important, I learned not to be afraid of those error messages because there were so many, many, many error messages. Okay? Now, in the end, I wrote 400 lines of code, and it transformed this task entirely. So hours of my principal cutting and pasting to this. Now, if you blinked, you probably missed it. <laughs> now, my principal looked at me as if I had done magic, but that was no magic. That was his own method his own creativity and reasoning translated into code. And going through this experience changed my planning, record keeping, and activity design forever. Because I now ask myself, how do I enable computers to do what they do best so that I have time to do the things that I do best as a professional? And I'll tell you, answering that question has led to a string of really fun projects. So first off, on the airplane, and the students made fun of me for this, on the airplane, I was playing around with making a hotel room assignment generator. And I later found use for this in making groups for my classes, lists for calling on students, and partners for projects. And I still use this today. I made a student comment writing tool that made comment writing much, much smoother for me. It let me put in common introductions to comments for students in the same class, and it also auto-completes with phrases that I often use. I needed help organizing student requests to take quizzes during the, during the school day, and Google Docs, it was good, but it just wasn't cutting it. I was finding I had to look through spreadsheets and try to find when students were meeting with me and what they were going over, and it was far too much. So I hit the ebooks again to learn to build a web application to do this for me. I then found that with so many students coming in to take quizzes, I needed a quiz generator so I, uh, that maybe uses random values and words so that each student has a different quiz. So I learned to create that too. I made a gambling game as an activity to do with students uh, as we were learning probability. And so I gave them all a little bit of Weinberg cash and let them hit buttons to try to bet and win more. Over 3,000 clicks later, 
it became really, really clear that it was good this wasn't real money my students were gambling because this is what their balances over time looked like. I feel really bad for this, this student right there. <clears throat> I don't know if we're surprised. Uh, I created a script that parsed the text of eight complete IB physics exams to identify some of the most common non-content words for my ELL students. And I created randomized bigo cards for a math class review activity. Now, building it myself means I can also change it when new situations arise. So for those of you who aren't uh, excited about math the way I am, maybe you wanted to do the same thing but for literary devices. So this is not real time sped up a little bit but me creating these bingo cards for literary devices. Copy and paste, a couple little commas. And the best part is that when I make something like this, I share it. Someone else is going to be able to make use of this. I've had people that I don't know from the other side of the globe tell me, that's great, do you mind if I copy it? And of course, the answer is, I don't mind at all. Please, take it, use it. I have others say, did you know you could do this this other, much simpler way? And I pause, and usually I'm pretty amazed, and I say, uh, no, but thank you. It was fun making it anyway. <laughs> this conversation multiplied my rate of learning significantly. When we wanted to do a school activity involving family feud, I, I did what I usually did, which was try to find a slide deck for PowerPoint. Uh, but I stopped, because as I started going through it, I realized that editing slides and connecting the different slides to each other, I was never going to want to do that again. And if it was fun, we probably would want to do it again with students. So if I could build an app that updates with different questions and answers for different years that we do this, and not have to update tons of slides by hand, I would be super happy. So I figured out how to build it. Of course, with sound effects. <laughs> And incidentally, a student who learned that I was doing this in my web programming class asked if he could help. And so everything that you see here, the visual aspects, are all that student. This reality leaked into my personal life, too. I knew that I would be too frazzled for a status update. So I created this single-purpose website to let friends and family know the news when it happened with a single press of a button on my phone. Now, <laughs> it's true that apps exist to do many of these things. Okay? That my point is not to reinvent the wheel for its own sake. I derive a great amount of pleasure from the journey, from the process, because it, learn, it forces me to learn and rethink and reframe my knowledge and respond to my mistakes. It made me realize that everything I build can be a jumping off point for a new project, or it just becomes part of my toolkit. Because if I build it once right, I can use it forever. And so can anyone else if I share it with them. I share this learning path with my students. They see me building and creating and responding when my solutions don't work. They suggest features. They find bugs, lots of them. They see that I don't always wait for someone else to build me the tool that I need. This brings me to my call to action today. I am here to push you all to join me, in the, join me in this movement. This is the year you are going to learn to code. Okay? Now, it might be using spreadsheets, or Scratch, or Python, or JavaScript. It doesn't matter. The language is important. That you get started is what matters. I challenge you to learn before the end of this year, this school year, to code one of your classroom tasks. Something you did last week was tedious, repetitive. You grumbled to yourself that there has to be a better way, but you said, I might as well just do this by hand. I'll just do it by hand one more time, one more time, one more time. That stops today. Because that problem that you identified, that's where you begin. That's your syllabus. The most important question is how much you start. And my 
recommendation is to do what I did. Okay, search for somebody that is doing this already. Start simple. Copy their code and then break it. Look up things that you don't know and don't be afraid to ask the people who wrote the code you found for help. Because every single time that I've asked for help, I've gotten direct assistance from the people who shared. Okay, and I promise you this, there will be a moment when you build exactly what you want with code, something you never thought that you could create, and you will feel the tremendous chemical rush of success. Okay, you know this rush that I'm talking about. Okay, you peddle it in your classrooms every day. We've seen what it does to our students. It's time to treat yourself to your own product, yeah? Because you deserve it. Computers can do some of your work faster and easier than you ever could. And if you, have, if you learn to teach them to do so, you'll have more time for the other stuff that really matters. I want to close with this. We've all been behind this person in line. And we grumble to ourselves, this is going to take forever. I just have a stick of gum. And we picture the checkout person passing the cans one by one. Beep. 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 We see it happening. This plays out. And then the checkout person scans one, hits a button, and then pushes the rest through. And in that instant, that checkout person becomes your hero. I want you to become that hero for your students and for your colleagues. Thank you.